Oh, no, not another crappy YouTube video from some guy comparing two pedals, one that's way overpriced and the other one that's overpriced. Oh, man. Yeah. So this is Mike from Nashville, and this is a $200 expensive FRV1 from Boss Spring Reverb, and that's hiked up right now. That's overly hyped, and it's a big deal. But it's all hyped up. Everybody's got it all hyped up out there on Reverb and got the prices jacked. And then here's a Topanga Cattle and Bread Spring Reverb. And I'm playing in a Boss Katana 50 with a 62 American Vintage Stratocaster. And here's the difference between these two. I tune the guitar. He's no Philip McKnight. Man, I'm going to leave a bad comment and go look at Anderton's. That's where you watch, really watch good videos. And plus, this guy can't even play, and he's out of tune. Oh, man, I want to hear some metal. What is this crap? Man, this guy sucks. Hey, thanks for so watching. Anyway, this, uh, just in conclusion here, the Boss FRV1 and the Topanga here, Re Reverb, Spring Reverb, I think are both great pedals, both of them. This really, to me, after playing them both, and I did not want to have to repurchase this. I bought this when it was new, and now it's hiked up the price. I'm just bitter, folks. I am bitter because it's me, not you, that I had to pay a little higher. I only paid 130 for this, which is not bad. On, on a reverb and this I paid I think 140 so I actually ended up paying more for this one and I bought this one first thinking I'm not gonna get that FRV one I owned it already and I got this and it's just not as vintage sounding to me this really has that vintage sound and I, when I first got this I didn't I thought the dwell too high 
sounded a little bit over the top, that drip sound. It almost sounded fake or too much of it, but I've learned to adjust it properly. And now going back and then kind of repurchasing this and then just ate, ate away at me. I'm like, God, this sounds great. And the reverb sounds great. But this one, you, I would say the big difference between these two, this one really affects your tone heavily. And it really just, even, even on the, the mix setting here, if, even at, if you saw when I did the video, I did it low and it was still pretty high. And this one, you almost need to do more because you get more of your regular signal through there. Um, so this one here will, I'd say, preserves your tone a little bit more. And this one really drowns it with that, F, with that Fender Reverb 63 sound, which is fine, which is fine because it really does when you play them both. Man, it sounds like the old 60s reverb. This really does. This is more like... I think you can use it as a booster too with the volume so you get more for your money i think both are really good pedals and i'd say worth owning them both because they both will have their own applications like both for the surfy stuff right here and for this thing right here you can do some surf it sounds good a little less drippy you know exaggerated drip on this but it's more natural i think but this man really sounds like the 60s sound so i'm happy i reacquired re this and it's a high priced and it's hyped up, but maybe it's worth it being hyped up for that price if it sounds good, and it does. But again, I love both of these pedals. I think these are my two favorite reverb pedals out there. So thanks for watching, hope you like my silliness. And also I'm gonna go to the NAMM show, Summer NAMM here in Nashville. I'm gonna be filming that this weekend and I'll, I'll post that as well. And leave in the comments, please. That's why I do these videos. It's all about you, the people watching. I love your opinions and I, you know, I love hearing, getting ideas from people and I love to start conversations. I'll answer any questions I can or whatever. And, um, you know, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe and leave comments. I really love to hear from you. Thanks. So, thanks for watching. Take it easy.